man, what's good on YouTube? It's your boy, your host, Rest Guy Dragon Squad. Bitch. Back with another reaction. Today we are here with another death battle, Crash vs. Spyro, man. Um, I've been I've been on a hot streak with these death battles so far, man. Um, I would go for Crash for this one, but I think I'm gonna go with Spyro. I mean, come on, Dragon. I fuck with dragons. Dragons are like my favorite, my favorite uh animal. Yes, dragon. I, I I think dragons are real. Like dinosaurs, the the bro, dragons are real. Quit fucking with me. But um, but yeah, man, I'm I'm I'm, I'm gonna have to go with Spyro though. But I really don't really know too much about Spyro. I played the Crash games. I I played Spyro before. Um, nah, like I I think like McDonald's had like this little toy where it was like. They had the Spyro game on it or some shit like that. I, I played that. I didn't play, like, I, I, th I think I might play the actual PlayStation game. But um, I'm going to have to go with Spyro, bro. But we finna get into this jank, man. Um, Maybe with what they uh, break down in this analysis, um, might change my mind. Let's get it, though. Here to a spectacle from under so. Yeah, I'm going to go with Spyro regardless, bro, man. I'm going to drag the Dragon Squad, bro. Come on. Get to Tano. Um, bro, turn that jank to 720p, bro. The early 1990s played yeah, host one of down. the biggest battlegrounds the world had ever seen. <laughs> Got that Draco. The console war. <laughs> Nintendo and Sega's mascots <laughs> were locked in a merciless duel over the gaming throne. But when the smoke cleared, a surprise third challenger was rising to the top. The Sony PlayStation. And it didn't have just one mascot. It had two. Crash Bandicoot, the mutant. Okay, so do, do, those are the under. first two masks. And Spyro the Dragon, the powerful purple hero of the Dragon Realm. He's whiz and I'm Yeah, PlayStation don't really be pushing them like that. To analyze so. their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. <laughs> Look at Crash. Crash be looking like he on crack. <laughs> I admire another brilliant doctor of science as much as the next guy, especially those with grand plans to take over the world. But I'm not sure Dr. Neo Cortex makes the cut. Why not? He did all that to make a bar? He made a mutant Aussie army of animals to take over the world. Sure, but when it came time to assign a general for this army, Cortex chose, of all things, a bandicoot. A bando what? You're making that up. It's a real animal. Look. Oh, hey, it's kind of cute. How's that little thing gonna take over the world? With the Evolvo Ray, Cortex did successfully mutate it into a powerful beast. However, when he tried to brainwash the creature, he utterly failed to create his fearsome general. Instead, he got Crash Bandicoot. So Cortex threw him out like trash, and Crash became his worst nemesis ever. Which is super embarrassing, because this mm -hmm. Banda Crash is a few snacks short of a Barbie. But his physical ability oh, so he's stupid. for it. He's got far wow. more skills like nobody's business. Which is appropriate as bandicoots are excellent jumpers, similar to their marsupial cousin, the kangaroo. He's got superhuman strength and can take a big hit and just keep on going like an energizer bunny of pain. Crash can double jump Ooh, in midair, slide in that? Uh, distances, and use Crash Dash. That's that damn his, hipster Crash. He's also tapped into Mojo. Okay, flex. Okay, flex on him. To enhance his battle techniques, he's got his Norris Roundhouse and Triple Dragon. But his favorite move is the Cyclone Spin. He can even give this move a boost for the Death Tornado technique. Though this can leave him dizzy and prone to counter attacks. <sighs> Still, these brutal moves proved incredibly useful for rescuing his fellow mutant bandicoot girlfriend, Tana. Oh, why does she look like that? Hello, She's mama. Like really hot, but also yeah. not at the same time. I'm really confused. Nah, she look hot. Uh -huh. well, she ain't on, she ain't on Jessica Rabbit level, but. To save her, his future battles with Cortex would require more sophisticated tools. Yeah, like the Rad Copter Pack. He's even got himself the unicorn of motorsports, the Space Motorcycle. What I wouldn't give for one of those. To increase his firepower, he carries a special bazooka. <laughs> you got the bazooka. Got them big guns. Form of ammunition. Oh my niggas all big guns. The same kind of fruit shooter that's on his power loader suit from Alien. Er, <laughs> I mean, this completely generic looking mech. But why mm. fruit? I can't imagine it's a particularly effective projectile. I don't know, Wiz. Remember that time I shot you with my potato gun? Ah, uh, you were stuck in a coma for like a month. Wait, Damn. what? 
You told me I lost that month because my time travel wristwatch finally worked. Oh, uh -huh. well, where's Crash getting all this cool tech? He can't be building it all himself. He's pretty dumb. They're all thanks uh. to his kid sister, Coco, who's ten times the inventor Cortex is. But Crash wow. isn't really dumb. He just lacks communication skills. He actually shows many symptoms of autism. Some people with autism, known as savants, are extraordinarily gifted in particular skill sets, and I think that describes Crash perfectly. While he may not know how to hold a conversation, he is a superb athlete and puzzle solver. Well, I'm sure it helps that he's surrounded by friends who encourage his better traits. <laughs> that man was biting on a wrench. I'm done. <laughs> like Aku Aku, his magical mask foster dad, who's basically a god. Lucky bastard. Aku Aku's <laughs> magical mojo prowess is quite impressive. He's very protective of Crash and will often Oh, uh, that Crash ugly as hell. What the fuck? But not all. What series was Wait, that? Why can he teleport across dimensions on his own, but can't teleport Crash very far at all? This is as far as I can take us. We'll have to fight our way to the robot's interior and save your sister. But you can't well, just tell him what? Yeah, what? Intuition is kicking in, encouraging Crash to learn from his own mistakes and become his own man, or Bandicoot. Yeah, maybe he's just being a dick. Well, mm -hmm. thanks to Aku Aku and his own amazing abilities, Crash has performed some incredible feats while stopping Cortex's plans time and time again. He's strong enough to lift his adopted brother Crash. So damn, like head. Sonic and uh, at least twice Dr. Eggman. Crash. I'm now done. Crash's strength is similar to the world's best power lifters. His damn. cyclone attack can generate enough force to lift this large boulder and throw it so hard it shatters on impact. Comparing its size to Crash, that boulder must weigh nearly eight tons. He's also fast enough to outrun Must weigh. Bears, which can move up to 25 miles per hour. But Crash really shines when it comes to durability. Just look at how well he holds up after oh, yeah. 112 falling wooden crates to the face. Huh. Where did they all come from? I bet it's Aku Aku's fault. And he's right back up like it didn't even happen. What a champ. Crash has endured an explosion of 23 crates of TNT all at once. Which, given their size, could potentially level a city block. Whoa. And with the help of Aku, Aku he survived a crash. That's all he said was whoa. Space. What the heck is up with his hair? This vessel was likely falling at 17,500 miles per hour, similar to the space shuttle's typical re-entry, which means the force of its collision would be equivalent to more than two million tons of TNT. Wait, but why didn't Aku, Aku just teleport them to safety? Yeah. I can't believe we're okay. <sighs> oh, are you that kidding me, useless. Aku? You know what you did, or didn't do. But what's the saying? Any crash you can walk away from, right? Plus, given how easy it is for Crash's enemies to look oh my at God. Crash, his absurd durability is crucial. Well, Crash isn't perfect, but with his amazing abilities <laughs> and a little bit of mojo, he's saved the and whole world many times <laughs> over. And after years of this, he even finally learned how to speak. Now let's go home and eat pancakes! Pancakes! Wait, that's it? Wow. Prophecy tells of a special purple dragon born every ten generations, destined to be a hero of his age. This was the legend of Spider. Okay, I, I, I need to real, real pay attention to this Malifor one. Before learned of this, he swore to destroy Spyro before he even hatched. By the way, there are at least three different timelines for Spyro, but we're mainly sticking with the Legend of Spyro version because he can do pretty much anything the other ones can. Yeah. And more. Plus, I think they're all the same as Spyro reincarnated anyway, since that's what the prophecy says, and look, that's totally Skylands being made at the end of Dawn of the Dragon. <clears throat> Wild fan theories aside, Spyro was saved from Malfor's wrath by Ignitus, a guardian dragon. Whatever happened to Skylanders, bro? I remember everybody was playing that, bro. I don't... I don't want to play in it. Okay, why do so many stories start with people just throwing babies into rivers? That's never a good idea. I don't know. Wrong, Wiz. It worked out well, why'd he show Spyro? Goku? Goku wasn't thrown was into a... And adopted by a family of dragonflies. And even without fellow dragons around, Spyro grew up to be a pretty good fighter. He's strong, tough, and makes good use of his horns, tail, and claws. But not his wings. Not yet. Without a dragon's parentage, Spyro remained mostly grounded during his childhood. But he got pretty good at using his head. Like, the fun way, not, not the brainy stuff. You do not want to be on the other end of his charge attack. But one fateful day, everything changed. 
During a game of hide and seek with his quote unquote brother, Sparks, they got into a bit of monkey business and, in desperation, Spyro unexpectedly breathed fire. This was Spyro's first hint that he was <gasps> a dragon. Hold up! You mean wow. he thought he was an actual dragon fly the whole time? I can think of a few other hints that like that. That nigga retarded. Oh my god. Any time he saw his reflection. This revelation prompted Spyro to go on a journey in search of his true home among other dragons. Oh, and Sparks tagged along to help find treasure and protect his dragon brother from harm. Not like he needed it. He's the chosen one, bitch. He's got a <laughs> bunch of awesome dragon powers. As a purple dragon, Hell Spyro yeah. is not limited to just his fire breath. After finding and rescuing four great dragon guardians, they each became his teachers in the arts of elemental combat. Ignitus taught Spyro how to control fire and focus it into huge blasts. Voltaire showed him how to use electric breath to stun enemies and toss them through the air. Cyril mm -hmm. taught him to freeze foes solid and fire ice Okay, Sp Spyro. Showed him Facts. Use earth breath to split rocks and roll up into a ball. Spyro also honed his physical and chi combat with the martial art of Dragon Kata. Oh, and he finally learned how to fly. About time. Speaking of which, Spyro learned how to briefly slow down time to improve his reactions. Oh, damn. But <laughs> Except, oh, damn. Spyro learning the ultimate element, the convexity breath. Ether. Convexity. It's ether. No, stupid. Everyone calls it convexity. Oh, okay. Purple dragons like Spyro can use a mysterious energy that is essentially the spiritual life force of the universe. While it's never officially named in canon, lead concept artist Jared Poland has gone on record to clarify its name and properties. And he calls it Ether. Eat that boomstick. Don't convex me, Wiz. True hmm. fans know I'm right. Ether is an extremely powerful element <laughs> which binds the fate of the huh? living and the dead. With Ether, Spyro pulls from the four elements to create energy which, according to Poland, has power comparable to that of an atom smasher. Isn't that the thing that shoots an atom around at light speed for all sorts of sciencey stuff? Yes, there are particle accelerators with a moving photon beam containing 362 megajoules of energy. Yeah, I said that. Uh, <laughs> this beam can slice through a human skull in a nanosecond. Just uh. like what happened to Russian scientist Anatoly Bugorsky when he stuck his head in one of them. Oh my the god. That? God, being Russian must be hard. Bugorsky took a beam less than a molecule thick through the skull, which obliterated all matter in its path in an instant. While he survived, half of his face around the microscopic hole in his head swelled, peeled apart, and was permanently paralyzed. While he experienced Damn. a blinding light he described as brighter than a thousand suns. Hey Spiral, what was that about? I don't really know. But he I survived it though. It. And when I did, hey, he a legend. Of a thousand suns surged through my body. Just imagine if that beam was the size of Spyro's super breath. No, wait, you don't need to. We've seen what it's like when he killed the ape king. Of course, Spyro they really say they really didn't say nothing about um Crash's weaknesses. I don't think. Is he shooting ghosts at her? What kind of magic were they smoking when they came up with that? But Ether is dependent on a balance between light and dark. Should a purple dragon fall prey to their own anger and hatred, they risk being consumed by dark Ether or Nether, transforming into a blackened, rage-filled form. Spyro's a really nice guy, but as dark Spyro, he lets loose. He's stronger, faster, and way more violent. Unfortunately, when Spyro's consumed by dark Ether, he cannot return to his old self on his own. But with friends like Sparks and Cinder at his side, he's always found his way back. <laughs> he found a way. <laughs> My man found a way. Red Spyro, you gotta believe. <laughs> believe it! Powers at his claw tips, Spyro is a force to be reckoned with. He's pretty quick, outracing biplanes that can fly over 159 miles per hour. He's pushed a gold statue about twice his size, and he's pretty tough, claiming his skill. Man, barely even touched that shit. So I'm electricity proof too? Oh, I knew that's how ugly it is. But now this? A bold claim, but let's look at the facts. Spyro once took a punch from this massive magma golem, which then lost its arm and replaced it with a cathedral tower. This cathedral is very similar in size to St. Stephen's Basilica, a Roman Catholic church in Budapest, Hungary. By taking the height, length, and depth okay. of the basilica and adjusting for empty space, we can estimate the arm's mass to weigh over 400,000 tons. Assuming a low-end punching speed of 15 miles per hour, mm, that's damn, human. we rock this little shit. Might hit with at least 1.9 million tons of force. And after getting all Spyro. these powers, Spyro. Spyro. The dragon and defeating the Dark Master himself, 
Pyro tapped into ether one last time to literally pull the exploding planet back together. What? How the hell? How? Silver. I'd say a mix of the power of love, magic of friendship, and a smidgen of prophetic destiny. Wiz, I want a pet dragon more than anything. It's a sad sight, Clark. I want a pet dragon too. The warrior falls victim to the plague of love. Why your pixels moving, bro? <laughs> Why when you're moving your head, your whole all right, the body moving, bro? Let's end this debate once and for all. That crashed like he was on crack. I can't fuck with him. Oh my god. He really didn't say nothing about um crashes weaknesses. I don't think. Is he shooting ghosts at her? What kind of magic were they smoking when they came up with that? But ether is dependent on a balance between light and dark. Should a purple dragon fall prey to their own anger and hatred, they risk being consumed by dark ether or nether, transforming into a blackened, rage-filled form. Spyro's a really nice guy, but as Dark Spyro, he lets loose. He's stronger, faster, and way more violent. Unfortunately, when Spyro's consumed by dark ether, he cannot return to his old self on his own. But with friends like Sparks and Cinder at his side, he's always found his way back. He found the way. <laughs> My man found the way. You gotta believe. <laughs> believe it. Powers at his claw tip. Last battle. So check out this week's menu and get your thirty dollars off at blueapron.com/battle. But right now, it's time for a death battle. That nigga looks stupid, bro. You okay? Weird. Uh, what are you doing? Is he, is he finna kill him? That was kind of fucked up. I'm not even going to snatch. He should, he should low key went straight ether mode. She. All right. Look at this nigga. You asked for it. Nigga hitting the show, but shouty. Isn't that kind of like he been hit the Superman punch under that? Isn't that kind of like interference? Cause that's like a whole nother entity. It's not a part of Crash, so I don't know. I guess he technically is a weapon, but I mean, still. Blow the mech up, Spyro! What are you doing? Blow the mech up! This nigga's retarded. Bow, bow, bow! Hello. <laughs> Was that a fruit? <laughs> that nigga letting them shits fly. Come on, Sparrow, come on. No, no, no. Where do you keep finding these things? Come on, Spiral. Come on, bro. Damn. <laughs> I just might give him the boot. <laughs> he didn't get the boot. I'm done with this. Come on, Spiral. Man, come on, bro. Nobody messes with me, pal. KO! <laughs> I don't think Spiral is a legend. Fresh from the grave after that. 
Spyro had plenty of obvious advantages. Yeah, he his did. His speedy flight let him control the pace of the battle, and his elemental arsenal gave him a much wider variety of attacks than Crash had ever seen in a one-on-one -on -one fight. Even with his extraordinary puzzle-solving skills, Crash was simply overwhelmed. Yeah. But surprisingly, this wasn't nearly as one-sided as it looked on paper. With the strength to throw an eight-ton boulder, Crash was actually stronger than Spyro. And what? both of them had survived impacts worth around two oh, yeah, tons of force. Oh, yeah. How convenient. It's almost like they planned this all along. To be fair, we hmm. did have to hold <laughs> all Spyro's durability against the Golem's punch. However, both of them had shown durability, which far exceeded much of their attack capability. So even with his gadgets, Crash really didn't have a good way to hurt Spyro very much. Yeah, well, the fucking fruits. Is, Spyro Aww. didn't have many attacks that could firmly hurt Crash either. <laughs> just too tough. He kicked the hell out of him. Spyro used the ether breath, which could literally break matter apart at an atomic level. Not even Aku Aku could save Crash from a beam that intense. I guess Crash just couldn't spin this one. The winner is Spyro the Dragon. All right, who we got next? Who we got next? Hey guys, thanks for watching this episode of Death Battle. If you want to get the battle music for yourself, you can get it by clicking the link below. And if you guys want to see exclusive commentary on this episode, click that little box over there. First membership trial. Sora. Sora, Sora. Sora's gonna win. Sora versus Pit. First. Wow, so they they, they got their own little first, like Rooster Teeth. Hmm. I don't know, man. I I I I gotta go Sora. I don't really know too much about Pit, but I gotta go Sora, man. When you walk away, you hear, hear me say, please, oh baby, don't go simple and clean in the way that you're making me feel tonight. It's hard. Bro, that thing is a banger. That song, that song alone destroys Icarus. I mean, Pit. Why am I thinking about Icarus? But um, that was a fire. That, that was a fire battle. <laughs> no pun intended. But um, well, you already know. And dragons come out on top, bro. Dragons are the superior animal. Um, like, like I was, I was gonna go for Spiral regardless. You feel me? But um, damn. Not, not even the Majora Mask. I cost the Majora Mask. Oh my god. I'm tired, guys. I'm tired, man. But the Aku Aku couldn't even stop that. But yeah, man. Wow, that that is kind of messed up. He really killed his brother right in front of him. Like he didn't like like he like, he. That's tough, bro. But hasn't Sparks taken like a, 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 a you, 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 you telling me Sparks hasn't taken a harder hit? from something else before i don't know bro i don't know but <sighs> that's tough that's tough now spiral is evil but anyways that's all i say about it though man um y'all got to post your comments down below tell me what you guys thought about this though um leave a like if you enjoyed though uh, just like if you didn't subscribe i upload a single day from fridays and sundays and i'm gonna be out this big dragon squad y'all finish it for me and i'm signing off that way dexter y'all huh